This video has come about as the result of a fair bit of observation over the past few years, as well as reading on numerous topics related to the topics at hand. And I have to say I've grown increasingly concerned about the issues involved in these particular topics. I'm referring to here the science and the public that is, the transmission of scientific knowledge to the public, uh, public educators, people such as Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, scientists who are effectively public scientists, and they probably don't produce a lot of research, but they try to relate scientific concepts and ideas to the public at large. And increasingly what I think is the main problem, quote-unquote problem, that afflicts uh, society as a whole, and that is cognitive division. Increasingly, I am convinced that that is the primary problem we face. Now, of course, people will jump and say, no, no, it's race. There is a racial component to that, obviously, because of uh, aggregate uh, differences in the mean uh, IQ of, of different uh, ethnic or genetic profiles or populations. Not denying that, and so you'll see greater stratification among certain groups. That's certainly the case in the United States uh, between different uh, genetic populations, uh, and is there to be seen. However, that doesn't detract from the fact that the divisions we see, and I'll be going into some details on this, are really, uh, in in the main, cognitive divisions. Now, what actually finally prompted me to make this video was an encounter. I'd say alarming encounter, but it wasn't in retrospect. I suppose it was just sort of par for the course. I had an online venue where I encountered a young man, about 20 years old, uh, undergraduate researcher of Alzheimer's. We got in discussion, there were other people present, and we talked about neurons in the brain, and one of the legacies of my late friend Adam Jensen was to inform me and, and provide arguments and information such that I, I, I kind of see uh, the issue with things like Alzheimer's and dementia and really any issue that arises uh, in, at advanced age is an issue of aging and cellular deterioration and more specifically lack of cellular uh, regeneration, the inability basically of cells to repair themselves. And we got in a discussion about that and I said, well, yes, it's important, but it's part of a bigger problem, the problem of aging. And the people who could hear this conversation were probably of similar age, I would suspect. I don't know their exact age. This one guy was about 20, if I recall right. And this wasn't, these weren't the voices or the comments of people who were just ignorant or indifferent, or even smugly indifferent. Now, this was outright hostility to the topic at hand, the type of hostility that you might have uh, translated as, oh, so much science, my head hurts, that sort of thing. The kind of hostility that kind of reminds me of that it's skit by Chris Rock from the 90s when he's talking about the difference between niggas and black people and he goes on with, you know you gotta hide your valuables behind books because you know, you know books books like kryptonite to niggas that kind of thing but I mean the kind of outright hostility these people had to the ideas we were talking about and more specifically to science in general and this wasn't the first time I'd encountered this people of that generation say about 20 years younger than I am and even the guy who was doing undergraduate research in Alzheimer's, I have to say, was not particularly articulate. Another concern, but what I'm beginning to see is that Charles Murray is right on the money. That the difference between Belmont and Fishtown, Belmont being representative of this cognitive elite and Fishtown being representative of the, of the regular folk, it is massive now. And when somebody is cognitively 
disadvantaged, which is to say isn't in a position to readily understand certain concepts or even take an interest in certain concepts because other things are at the forefront. The natural reaction to that is not uh, to be puzzled or to want to understand, but hostility. People, there's a, a good track record in human history of being hostile to things one does not understand. At some point in time in European history, it, it is known that certain groups of people uh, were punished for allegations of witchcraft and, and, and magic and sorcery. Now, it's obviously not the case. I mean, when crops had failed or there had been a plague, you know, germ theory hadn't been around and we didn't understand the relationship between climate and agriculture. So, yeah, they were obviously wrong, but the hostility that ensued as a result of misperception and, and misunderstanding was, was palpable in there. People died as a result and were punished in fairly heinous ways. And so this, I don't really see this as all that different, although these people are not in a position and probably would not burn people or torture them to death for uh, their interest in science or... Uh, desire to discuss certain topics, but this division is just massive, and it has cloven society in twain in a way that, if recollection serves me right, that 20 years ago just wasn't the case. And then I have to come to the, uh, back to the topic of, of public education and science. There's a long-standing notion in the public sphere pushed by people such as Neil Gras Tyson. Then there's Bill Nye is another good example, I suppose. Uh, even Richard Dawkins, to some degree, uh, who still writes books but doesn't actively engage in research. He's effectively a scientist for the public. Lawrence Krauss might be another example. I mean, he talks a lot about physics to the public. I mean, Needless to say, there's there's an, there's an array of, of different people who have been scientifically trained, have PhDs, have published things, and write books, who communicate with the public and think it's absolutely essential to engage in a dialogue and have a discussion with the public at large regarding scientific ideas of all sorts, be it climate change, physics, evolution, what have you. Now, this will be a bit controversial to some people. But I've come to the conclusion that this is largely a waste of time. And why have I come to this conclusion? For the very reasons I've cited. The cognitive division, the cleft, as it were, between people is just too large, has grown too much for this to be uh, actionable and have real-world effects, in my view. And much of this arises from the problems that a person such as Charles Murray seeks to address in books such as Coming Apart, the cognitive division. And what it is, in effect, is, well, these people's own blindness. I mean, people such as Richard Dawkins and, to a lesser extent, Neil deGrasse Tyson, they, they live in a kind of bubble. Um, not only a cognitively elite bubble, but a bubble of a knowledge bubble. And a, a bubble where the interests in particular types of knowledge or specialties of knowledge, divisions of knowledge, where all of this is present. And they naturally assume that this is important to them, and thus it, it should be. And sometimes the right ought to be important to the public at large because some of these ideas are earth-shatteringly important. Evolution, for example, or the understanding the basics of physics or what have you. But they don't really get the public. They don't interact. They're not on the ground, as it were, or in the internet, on the internet, interacting with these people who are effectively advocating not just a type of indifference to these ideas, but an outright hostility. And it makes sense. If you can't understand something, acknowledging that you can't understand it and acknowledging that you're puzzled uh, or bemused and you require explanation is very damaging to the ego. 
it's much easier just to say, well, fuck that shit. I'm not going to bother F- a bunch of fucking nerds and losers. And increasingly, I see this all over the place online. This is just but one episode of, of many. And I think that given the increasingly large rift between those who are sufficiently cognitively endowed to understand not even very complicated scientific concepts, but science in general, and the people who are are in a difficult position to grasp these things and are outright hostile at times, very often indeed, that a potential restructuring of how this is viewed is necessary. Don't I think that people such as Neil Grass Tyson, Lawrence Krauss, all these they're at best they're promoting the notion that science is cool. You all know the science is cool crowd. The science is cool crowd are they're an interesting bunch. They're people who are smart enough to actually understand this stuff, at least theoretically, but rarely take the time uh, and or draw upon the energy to, to do so. And I give you an example of these types of people. Now, these aren't always people who will say, literally, science is cool, or science fucking rocks, or this is liberal nonsense, right? But I'll give you an example uh, from a friend, based on a friend of mine, who, uh, Australian guy, I think he must be about 19 or 20, and next time we talk privately, you can correct me on his age, but this guy is unquestionably brilliant. So much so that he, he knew... He was better at math than his high school teachers, and so he had to take online courses, and that's how, how brilliant he is, particularly in the realm of, of computer science, the whole, the whole number-crunching game. He is a master of that. And he's at university now uh, studying related concepts, computer science, physics, engineering, all these things, because he's just that good. He's that bright in that area. And verbally, he's also not too too shabby. I'll, I'll add to that as well, although not on par in, with his um, mathematical skills. Nonetheless, he's in the he's taking these engineering courses, and he observes and has, has told me, yeah, I mean these people. He doesn't use these terms. These people are obviously bright if they're taking engineering and passing. They're bright, but these are the science are are, are cool types who just want to pass the course, get a job get their paycheck, you know, shack up, whatever, have, pop some kids out. They're not visionaries. They're just people who are just smart enough to get basic things and, and, and move on. And so the idea, inquisitiveness, which my friend, my young friend, definitely possesses. We've had many conversations about uh, sort of how do, how do you save humanity from itself on a variety of fronts, but is an additional attribute or quality that is lacking in the science's cool crowd because, precisely because they're the people who will post some article on fake book and say, well, science fucking rocks. It's fucking awesome. Barely understanding the content. Now, incidentally, the guy who was studying Alzheimer's, I think I was able to turn on the light bulb and said, oh, yes, hmm, aging. Cellular degeneration, inability, the inability for cells to repair themselves. This is all part and parcel of a bigger problem. Hmm. Meanwhile, these other guys were just, well, fuck, my head hurts. Don't talk, talk to me about this bullshit. And I think that the time might have now arrived where we have to acknowledge that these cognitive divisions are so great and and so powerful that it is a waste of time, money, and resources trying to teach certain things to certain people. It sounds like an extreme statement because the common mantra of our times is uh, education is great and everyone should be educated and yada, yada, yada. But I would propose that that idea itself is dogma. It's a type of liberal dogma. Education will free us all, and we'll learn about cool stuff, and then we can all run around about how cool science is. Most people don't give a shit about science, actual science, understanding key concepts and how they relate to human beings. 
If they did, the world would look very, very different. But when I look out at the landscape of the world, as, as do you probably, you see, and for the most part, the science is cool or science fucking rocks types, reasonably intelligent people, but lacking inquisitiveness and, and don't really want to uh, push forward or gain more in-depth knowledge. Or, you know, Joe, Joe Sixpack, who frankly speaking isn't, not only doesn't care, it just is hostile towards these ideas. And the cognitive elite, the educators of the public, these scientists, the Neil deGrasse Tysons, the Richard Dawkins, and even to some degree Sam Harris. Sam Harris is, um, yeah, you could say that, same category. He, he just lives in his own bubble. But Sam Harris lives in a particular bubble because he's <laughs> ruined his mind. I'm using that, I'm saying that facetiously, lots of meditation, what have you, but... You can't reach these people. And so it's really questionable if it's worth spending time, money, and resources t trying to teach these people things they not only don't care about, they're hostile towards. And mark my words, as time goes by, cognitive division will be the division of the future. Some people will try to frame this along racial lines because, once, I, once again, the on aggregate, aggregate, the mean differences between populations will yield certain results or not yield certain results. And in particular, the people who are at the mean uh, or below the mean of certain populations that tend to have lower IQs, as relates to G, well, they're going to congregate and and spend time with, time with themselves and people will point this out and, and what have you. But the real division will be cognitive division down the line as people across the board from all types of genetic divisions will no longer be able to engage with the world adequately. Uh, the, the, the world that is being formed and shaped by a cognitive elite that is uh, really just beyond their ken. And I, I think someone who is somewhat above average in intelligence but not exceptional such as myself will be, you know, for example, my friend in Australia, I could never do what he's doing for a variety of reasons. I just lack the intellect. But this is uh, this is the big, I think, the big question of our times. Uh, there are many questions people talk about, religion and tradition and degeneracy and all sorts of racial questions. And yes, there is certainly validity to all these questions. But the thing that will stratify and sunder everything will be these increasingly vast cognitive differences. Now, it might be that, call this a nebulous prediction, that the cognitive elite will be able to keep the, the bane hounds at bay, no pun intended there, via distraction, which is sort of the current year, right? online video games, smartphones, me phones, dumb phones, things that perpetually distract them uh, from the misery of their lives. It's possible. They could run that show for decades to come. I don't know. But let's not kid ourselves. Even if, even if that is successful as a model, uh, even if it's this is the sort of let them eat cake version 2.0, let them play video games and, and dabble in smartphones and whatever. That will not last forever. And in five decades, the cognitive division will be that much greater. Uh, I will, in five decades, it's entirely possible that someone of my meager abilities will be regarded as a, a frothing at the mouth moron. And let's say nothing of uh, these people who are outright hostile to some of these ideas. So, if I propose the idea that it's a waste of time or squandering resources, the flip side of that is if you pump more resources to the already well endowed, and this something Jordan Peterson has pointed out, I think is correct. Uh, you know, effect effectively, the more you, ha if you already start with a lot, you're going to get more, and if you start with little, you're going to get less. Ideally, ideally, the idea would be to 
move towards a place where cognitive enhancement, and I don't want to go into details here on that, the specific details of how one would go about cognitive advancement, be it genetics or cybernetics or what have you, because that is the topic of a separate video with contained within a separate video, that we, we move towards that. Because in the long run, having that type of stratification is extremely damaging. And you didn't really see, I mean, this is something that is relatively new. Of course, there have always been smart people and, and dumb people. I'm sure if you, when Euclid was uh, living back in the day and he was roaming down uh, the road and he conversed with the farmers, I mean, the farmers probably didn't get what Euclid was doing. They couldn't even, he could, probably couldn't even entertain them with his ideas. But it's not as if the king during the high Middle Ages didn't understand the concerns of the serf or that they were cognitively so far removed from each other that, that there couldn't be an understanding born of whatever reciprocal feudal relationship existed. And sure, there were differences in, in taste and culture and what have you, but these were not differences in, in terms of the ideas that move people. I mean, sure, maybe the king and the queen had high fashion, you know, haute couture, whatever, but it wasn't as it is today. So this is really, oh, this is an amplified and newer version of, of a potentially much older problem, but one on a scale that is hitherto unknown. And I think if public policymakers continue on the path that they have thus far trodden, a path born of dogma, egalitarian liberal dogma uh, to a large extent, and an unwillingness to address certain real issues, the fact that people are cognitively distinct in their capacity and, and capabilities to do things, essentially maintaining the below-the-neck fallacy in perpetuity, there will be very dire consequences down the line. Very dire consequences. And that's where we're heading anyway. So all the people who promote this nonsense need to do, the Sam Harris's and uh, Richard Dawkins doesn't really promote it per se, but he, he probably... He wouldn't be the person to point out, oh, people are different. Well, we're going to be in a world, end up in a world of hurt. And um, there might be no way to repair whatever damage has been done or to, to even fix the situation. What, uh, one more example. I mean, this is something, this is anecdotal, but i give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I have a great deal of you know, online interactions. One of my interactions is with a um, young girl about 18, 19, who told me her story. And I can, I think, I have to believe her. And I think there's evidence that suggests she does. She has an IQ tested officially for about 150, so smarter than I am, in, in certain ways at least. And uh, with a, a profound interest in zoology, specifically ornithology. And she originally had been put into a school which she couldn't relate. She was pretty miserable. And then she was put into a quote-unquote elite school, and all of a sudden she was doing much better. This is a taste of things to come. This division where people simply cannot relate to each other on the basis of vast differences in cognitive ability, intelligence. Imagine trying to explain the basics of ornithology to somebody who not only doesn't know what ornithology is, doesn't even know what zoology is, and couldn't give a rat's ass about that. These divisions are present already. They have been for a while, and they will, they will deepen. And, well, as I said, it's quite likely that the entirety of the world be riven in twain as a consequence, just because people are maintaining this facade, this perpetual facade of public deception, self-deception, Things are peachy keen in, in elite land. Things are peachy keen for Richard Dawkins or 
or Neil deGrasse Tyson, director of the Hayden Planetarium. Yes, I visited that in my youth. But it won't. This won't last long. And here is another uh, potential consequence of all of this. As the cognitive gap widens, and we have a quote unquote democracy where public monies and what have you, it, it all it's all part of the same system, right? So the public needs to be convinced that something is worthwhile pursuing. Well, where are these scientists going to get their public funding? And I, for a long time, have thought that scientific research should be divorced from uh, public intuition and opinion, but neither here nor there, it's not, not at the moment. Where, where, what's going to happen when the gap is so wide that even the most emotionally charged argument cannot convince the writhing masses that something is worth it? That uh, Joe Sixpack wants to you know, give up his paycheck so he can fund some guy that he'll never talk to or can't even have a conversation with. More reasons to be concerned. More reasons to get the genie out of the bottle now before it's too late. We are very much on the clock on this issue. And I do think it's the issue of our time. And I know people will disagree. Uh, you know, lots of alt-right will say it's all about race. Other people will say it's about socioeconomic status. And all both those things, incidentally, are related to cognitive differences on some level. So uh, better just talk about the, the actual issue here. Anyway, this is something that's been, uh, I guess, burdening me in uh, my mind, at least, for a while. And this exchange I had a week or two ago with uh, this undergraduate re researcher of Alzheimer's and some of the comments I, I listened to uh, really was eye-opening and just kind of threw the... <sighs> nail the coffin shut, actually. And I just think that this really needs to be issue number one to be addressed, and if it's not, uh, we are severely fucked. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. I will check you out at a later date, perhaps. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.